So hi everybody, this is Bob Mangami, also known as Coach B. How's everyone doing today? Hope everybody's having a good day. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. What you all been up to? Let me know in the chat what you've been doing, where you've been. I've just come in from the grocery store. So as usual, I always have stories when I come from the grocery store because you Child, it's crazy out there. We've got lots of crazy people who think that carbon dioxide uh, from, <laughs> from wearing a mask is going to kill them. To people who try to, fi to fight the... Hello, hello. Hi there. I don't know the internet for a minute. Uh, Amanda, give me a thumbs up if you can... Yeah, there we go. So basically, yeah, people are fighting store clerks to be allowed into stores without masks. And the thing they are screaming out there is, hey, take away my freedom. Literally, you know, going to the grocery store has become such a drama fest for me. And I have to take some deep breaths before I leave and promise myself that I will stay uh, in my power because there's some things I see out there that just make me want to jump out of my skin, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, as usual, you know, it's the same thing. I go out grocery shopping once a week. <laughs> and this has become a ritual that I have to send to myself, tell myself to stay in my power. Talk to you guys today about loyalty, because I think this is really important. And the reason I bring it up is because... A couple of the young women that I mentor uh, has been having some, some issues. So basically, what is loyalty? Loyalty is when you stick up for someone, stand by someone no matter what, right? So we know of the loyal customer who won't buy groceries from any other place except that one place no matter what, right? And loyalty is a good quality to have. Like, you've heard the term loyal to a fault, right? Where you're so loyal to someone is actually detrimental to you and you really shouldn't be loyal to. And this brings me to the, to my issue with these um, young women. So basically, uh, you know, the question becomes, who are you loyal to? And, and when is it wrong or right to become disloyal? So here's an example. So one of these girls uh, was sexually assaulted by an uncle. And the entire family decided that they were going to deal with it internally in other words, they were not going to tell the police, they were not going to press charges, so they dealt with it internally. And uh, as far as the rest of the family is concerned, all is well. He was told never to do it again, and that and that and that. But for the victim, who is my mentee, she's suffering right now. She's suffering because she feels like justice was not done. She feels like her family let her down the entire family, and I'm not talking just her parents and siblings, but the entire extended family. And I think a couple of her siblings agree with her that something should have been done. And so I wanted to talk about loyalty and um, the toxicity of this kind of loyalty where in the end, you lose any sense of right or wrong. And I, I think that is really important to understand. You guys all have friends who, whom you're loyal to. The question you wanna ask, and I asked this young lady was, when you flip it, they're saying family loyalty, this family of yours. But question is, were they loyal to you? Because if they had been loyal to you, the right thing would have been to go to the police and press charges and get this guy locked up, okay? You, you, cannot, you cannot hide a predator like that in the name of family loyalty. So this just got me thinking and wondering, how many of you guys are loyal to people in your lives who are not loyal to you? How many of you are friends uh, or people who are not loyal to you? In other words, you'll stick up for them no matter what, but they will join the witness protection program as soon as you get into trouble or as soon as something concerns you. And how many are still friends with people who've literally thrown you under the bus for something? Yeah, I used to be that person, okay? I, I am the loyal to a fault kind of person. You know, I used to be so loyal to people that they would literally be kicking me out of their friend groups and would be crying and begging to be allowed to stay. And I would, in the, in, the, in the absence of certain people, I would literally fight, like fight and stand up for them if I heard other people talk about them. It wasn't reciprocal. 
It wasn't reciprocal, so it was always one-sided. It was always one-sided. And I think you have to look at some of your loyalties. Look at the people you're being loyal to and be honest with you. What is it that keeps you loyal to people who are not loyal to you? What is it? I want to posit for me personally, I mean, it was easy to see. It was just a lack of self-confidence and a lack of self-esteem and just a desire to fit in, a desire to have friends. And this is on young women particularly. Young women have a tendency, and we all talk over and over again, to want to be liked, to want to be seen as nice, to want to be seen as the best friend. How many people have been someone else's best friend, but that best friend hasn't been best friend to them? That's the kind of loyalty I'm talking about, where you will go to bat for somebody who doesn't give two cents about you, who in your absence talks negative about you, who in your absence says you're a nuisance, and so on and so forth. But they absolutely will do anything for you, including things that are harmful to them. So I want you to think about that a little and to, 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 to maybe look at why you would do that to yourself, right? The family thing is complicated, but I tell you what, in my mind, there is no complication, especially if it involves children and if it involves hurting children. I don't care what kind of family. I don't care how tight you all think you are. If there is a predator among you who's hurting children, that predator needs to be outed. There's no family loyalty there. And if you guys play the family loyalty thing, that's disgusting. And I told my young mentee, I said to her, go to the cops. Do you have the courage to go to the police? And I will support you. Because it is her voice being silenced. She's the victim. And she's having to excuse the victim and to cover up for the victim in the name of family loyalty. That's disgusting to me. And I think that we need to come away from this family loyalty. What? I mean, it's like, uh, what, what goes on in families? All these deep, dark secrets that people are hiding, you know, skeletons in the cupboard at the expense of innocent children. I mean, it, it baffles me. And so, I, I guys, let's look at this because, again, like, it's very important to tease some of these things out and look at the root cause. So such a family, for example, her family has money. Her family, it's the family name, right? So the family reputation is at stake if this were to come out. The family will fall apart. If this, so gra the grandmother is the matriarch, right? Who's saying, we're not going to talk about this, you know, uh, the, I'll, and she's using emotional blackmail things like, I'll just die of a heart attack I'm, uh, if this happens. If he goes to jail, I'll die. And I'm like, your granddaughter on this. Hey guys, if you can see me or hear me, can you, can you give me some hearts? Just give me some hearts. So I know that I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> My internet is hating. Hopefully they'll come out and fix it. Can you guys hear me or see me? Just give me some hearts and I'll carry on. Hello, anybody? Can you guys hear me? Anyway, I'm gonna keep talking, okay? And if, if you guys are not hearing me, I'll see the numbers go down. Anyway, guys, if you're getting value from this, please share this out to your groups, share this out to your, um, I know your, your mommy groups, your, your family groups, whatever groups you have. Please share this out because it's really eating at me. This idea that any deep, dark secrets that are covered up uh, in the name of family loyalty just for the sake of the family name at the expense of innocent children. And then these innocent children become adults who have issues, obviously, because if everything is hush-hush, they're not able to seek therapy. Nobody takes them anywhere for counseling. And so the hurt is there. The trauma is there. And they have to live with this trauma. And everybody else wants to pretend like nothing happened. And this is the problem with these families. If they decided to talk about it within the family, that would be different. They don't. They want to keep going like nothing's happened and yet they have a wounded child among them. I just, uh, you know what? It really makes me feel aggressive and angry right now just thinking of that. And I know that there are a lot, especially traditionalists that do this, things like that. I wouldn't, quite, quite frankly. And maybe that's why over years and years I've been protective of my children because my children don't go where I don't go. 
You know, I need to keep my girls, now that they're older and they can speak for themselves and they have more autonomy and they're little creatures, like they'll fight if they need to fight. But even then, I'm always, always on the lookout because it doesn't take long to damage somebody. You know, it does. All right, guys, this internet is really hating. Maybe it's because uh, there's some energies out there that do not want me talking about this, but I don't care because it has to be blown out the water. Um, yeah, and so, yeah, your grandmother would say, yeah, why? Yeah, and this is what they would do. So, for example, when she, this, this young woman I'm mentoring, when she brought it up to her family, the first thing she was told is she, was, she must never, ever say that. And then they told her nothing had happened. So she, like brainwashing her, she knew something had happened. Do you see how crazy making that is? She was hurt. And she, they're telling her nothing's happened. Can you imagine how crazy making that is for a kid? And every time she tried to bring it up, she'd get told nothing happened. And you don't, we don't say things like that in public, okay? We're not going to say anything like that in public because you'll get into serious trouble. Don't ever, ever, ever say things like that. And as she grew older, it was, we don't speak things like that about our family. This is our family stuff and we keep it in the family. You know what I call BS? I call BS on that. Uh, how can you keep someone trapped in trauma for years and years because of a family name? And this clansiness of families irritates the hell out of me sometimes. And this is where so much goes. And these perpetrators will go on to do it because they know that they have the cover of family. They know family will cover for them. And so they'll keep doing it maybe to several children in one family. That same predator will be doing that to children. And the family will be like, oh, well, nothing happened. I think it's preposterous. And so... I guess I, I just thought, let's have a, you know, I'll come and talk about loyalty. Who are you being loyal to who's not loyal to you? And, and some people like blood ties. Blood ties my ass, okay? Some of the worst people in your life will be your family members. If you want family so much and your family's crap, go and create an, inten an intentional family of your own, Right? Your family of origin does not necessarily mean that's, that's it. If your family of origin is full of sick people, get out. Get out and go and create a family of your own. Find your tribe. Find your, your friends. Make your friends your family. Like, I'm not talking about your, your, your like, I'm talking about your solid friends. Because sometimes your friends are way more loyal to you than family will ever be. I'm not saying go and break up your families, okay? But I just want to give you courage to do the things you need to do. Because sometimes it takes an outside voice giving you permission to do what you need to do for yourself. And telling you that it's okay to do that. And don't be gaslit and, and guilted and shamed by people into staying in places that are harmful and dangerous for you or your children or anyone else. So look around you. Who are you loyal to and are they loyal to you? How does loyalty look like? Reliable. Can you count on this person chips are down? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that in your absence, this person will stand up for you? Is this person the kind of person who you know, no matter what goes on. So for example, I have certain friends of mine who are so loyal to me. I know that if anything happened to me today, my children will be okay. I really know that. If my time to go came, I know that my children will be okay. Because I have those few people in my life I know are loyal and true to me. And vice versa, it's reciprocal. Right? If you have people in your life that, that, that you feel like that those are the people you ought to be loyal to too. Everybody else who's wishy-washy, who comes and goes, I'm not saying kick them out of your life, but I'm saying be aware of who's who in your circle. Be aware of who's who in your family. Because some of y'all have people who are loyal to your wallet. Mm -hmm. I said it. I said it. I'm going to say it again. There's some people who are loyal to your wallet. So put it 
if you're someone in your family, a lot of family, you might be the only one who, the first one to go to college, the only one to go to college, the one who's making a bucket. Suddenly, and everybody loves you, and they're all around, they love you, and you buy into the, you, you buy into the myth of Meanwhile, no, they're not loyal to you. They're loyal to your wallet. They're loyal to what they can get out of you. Because one, you're probably generous, right? You're the one taking care. And they will they will say the things you need to hear to make you feel like, oh, you're the savior of the family. And as you're called the savior of the family, you dish out more. They want your wallet. That's what they're loyal to, not you. How do you know? Ask yourself a question. Were these people around when you weren't making anything? And God forbid that you should stop making something. Will these people stay around? Or will they find someone else's wallet to be loyal to? Who knows? Just stay woke. Stay woke. And please, can you trust your gut instinct more? More often, in fact, 99% when you feel something isn't right, when you feel something is fake, when you feel something is phony, when you feel something is bogus, it is. Trust that instinct. You're better off trusting that instinct and maybe being proven wrong than not trusting it and then getting seriously hurt. But I can guarantee Hey guys, hey Janine, hey Ibogo, hey Memory, thank you guys for tuning in. My internet is acting weird. So I just was saying that for me, every single time my gut instinct has told me something, it's been correct. And so as a result, I don't doubt it. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be God herself coming down. And if my gut told me that, uh, run, I would run. Mm -hmm. That's how much I trust my gut. I would run. So I want you guys to start trusting your instincts more. Start believing what your inner knowing is telling you about the people around you so that you are loyal to people who are loyal to you also. And that you keep an eye out on those people in your life who you know are not loyal. Like I said, don't kick them out. I mean, hey, not everybody's loyal. Not everybody's loyal. But just keep an eye out because sometimes you're not really safe around people like that. So guys, I love you. I just thought I'd come on before the internet goes out. Let me say goodbye. Love you and leave you and um, see you later on. Have, the, have a great rest of your day. Bye.